Scott's Coldborn Museum yeah, okay. Oral History Project. I'm Hannah Nordhaus. I'm interviewing Mr. Bill and Judy Hogan. Bill's on the right, <laughs> Judy's on the left. Um, and uh, we are at the Rocky Flats Lounge, which is um, on Highway 93. Um, it is 29th of November 2005. Um, so to get started, if you guys could just tell me a little bit about your, your background and upbringing, uh, when you were born, where you were born, that sort of thing. Oh, great. Uh, well, I was born in Boulder, 1941, and uh, we lived just down over the hill for five or six years, and then we moved to Eldorado Springs till I was 12, which was around 1953. It was about the time that they moved these buildings in and, and uh, made a liquor store out of the one building and then we lived in half of it plus an addition on the back side of it and they moved this building in too at the same time but we did it was just a storage building for a long time and then they opened it as a restaurant and uh, used it and then the, the restaurant and the bar and then the other one burnt down which we had moved out before it burnt down and built a house down about a quarter of a mile and uh, so we lived down there and had the other part the liquor store was closed and the, it was rented out and it was burnt and then so then now this one's been here ever since. And, and did your family own the land um, well before the buildings were Yeah, on? yeah they uh, probably my great grandpa bought some land and homesteaded in the 1870s and been here ever since and my dad ended up with it in probably the 1930s and uh, got married and built a house down over the hill and, and lived there till we moved to El Dorado for four or five years or so and then we're back here. Oh. How many acres? There's around 600. Actually it said there was more than that to begin with, but we can't find any records where they sold any or where it went to, but there's right at 600 acres left now. Wow. And Judy, uh, you married into, into Oh yes, ranch. I married into this Hogan family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we were married in uh, 1962, so we've been married 43 years. And uh, our first house was the original house on the ranch which is now, it, it's still there. My son lives in it now. Where is it? Uh, down over the hill from our, the house that we're in now. It's down over the hill to the north and west, about a mile. Okay, so that's north and west of here too? Yes, north and west of here. And uh, just been here for 43 years, I have, and love every, every inch of it, so. It's, uh, and um, is, uh, you guys run on the land? Yeah, cattle and horses. Yeah. How many? Have around a hundred cows, mother cows, and they calve them. I calve them every spring and that. I rent the ground though around. We don't keep them here all the time. I just winter them here. And so I got some pastures rented that I run the cows on. And have you been able to, to be a full time rancher? Mm -hmm. Well, the last few years. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, and we have the TXI lightweight aggregate plants on our property, so that way we can afford to still run cows. <laughs> uh, we got the income from that. So you get royalty income from that? Right. Lease, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you said you moved up here in 53? Yeah. Yes, yeah, I think approximately, yeah. Mm -hmm. So right around the time that Rocky Black got started? Mm -hmm. Yes. And um, when did you become aware of uh, what went on there, what, what was happening? It was quite a few years after that. I was just a kid. It didn't interest me what was going on over there. <laughs> I was just going to school and stuff. Didn't really have any idea what they was doing over there. You didn't know that there was somebody over there? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because of the traffic. There was lots of traffic even then. Oh. <laughs> and they didn't consult with your... Any of the land that it was on originally part of your family? No. Ranch? No. Um, and so uh, over the years, did, did 
did your family have interactions with with Rocky Flats? Not really, except when my dad had the liquor store, you know, people would stop on their way home from work and stuff and, and that. But other than that, we really didn't have much to do with them. Once in a while, our horses would get through the fence and go down into there, and they'd call and say, come and give, and we'd go get them and bring them back. But other than that, we didn't uh, have much to do with them. They were, they were good neighbors. They never bothered us. We never bothered them. <laughs> No. No. Never did any of that. And so you're, you're all your land is outside of the, the buffer zone? Yeah, pretty much, yeah. And, and to the west. West and north, yeah. North and west. <coughs> um, so um, do you, can you tell me a little bit about the history of, of the, the lounge here? How, how, uh, well, I, not really. I was pretty young and a guy came along and wanted to open a restaurant and so him and my dad worked on it and put it together and fixed it up and started it as a restaurant. I'm not sure what happened to him, do you know? He had a uh, nursing home. He was by here, Ben something. I can't, I, I've got his car. Yeah, right yeah, that sounds uh, right. His son brought him by here about two or three months ago and said it. Uh, He's wanted to open this up originally and was telling me about the bar came from uh, this part came from uh, Holiday Inn was opening up a they had a place in Boulder and before Boulder got liquor by the drink and this bar was already in the Holiday Inn they already built it for the bar for the hmm. for their bar there and uh, they never got liquor by the drink at that time so he bought this bar from Holiday Inn in Boulder. Then you've been here since when? I've been here since eighty three. Eighty three. Can you introduce yourself? <coughs> Wyman Stacy. Wyman Stacy. Nice to meet you. And Wyman, um, you're now you're the manager, the owner, 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 and and you lease the from land from from the other. Right. Mm -hmm. And you've been owner since. Uh, the lady I was with, uh, she bought the business in '78. Uh, she and I were together from '83 uh, to she passed away 2001 with cancer. But, uh, she left the other half of the bar to her sister, and I bought her sister out. So is it um, busy these days with the site closing? Yeah, it's, so, it's still in the afternoon. Lunchtime is, is not like it was. You know, when they, Since they closed down, it's, it's took away a lot of the lunch crowd. The afternoons are still good. Are you a Packers fan? She was the Packer fan. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a Bronco fan, but I still don't, I own a Packer bar. So. Uh, it's still a Packer bar, though? Oh, yeah. <laughs> they, they fill it up when the oh, Packers yeah. are playing. Oh, yeah. <coughs> yeah, I've been all the Packer games for 20 years. <laughs> so, um, so um, can you tell me a little bit of, about the, his, the history that you know of the, of the lounge? And has, it, has it changed much in terms of the decor? And Nothing no. has changed in the 20-something years I've been here. Uh, we've added a, the, the uh, patio on about 20, a couple of years ago, 20 years ago. Uh, other than that, everything's pretty well the same. It's a great place. A lot of history. <laughs> so, um, and, and t can you tell me, um, a as owner of the lounge, I imagine you came to know a fair number of people um, who worked at Rocky Flats. Mm -hmm. um, can you tell me your impressions, of, you know, what sort of people they were? And well, we had all, all types of people. Uh, they didn't talk much about their jobs, so, you know, you, you just... I don't know what else to say about it. It's Did you get the impression it was a good place to work? They enjoyed it, yeah. Did um well did any of you guys ever have um, any concerns about being so close to a facility that produced nuclear weapons? No. It's never bothered me. So. Not really. Um, let's see. Um, we always said his dad lived here for 73 years and never did glow in the dark, so we figured it, everything was all right. <laughs> did you guys ever go on site for <coughs> meetings or anything like that? We went to that one. We went once. to one. And I worked there for a while when we were first married. I worked in the uh, employment department over there, the personnel department, but other than that, we didn't. Can you tell me your impression of the place coming from a 
ranching background, it must be a real different environment there. Than Somewhat. It was, it was um, open, you know, and it wasn't like a crowded office building or anything, so it really wasn't that bad. That was a long time ago, though. That was 43 years ago, so there wasn't that many people around here anyway. And you were on the outside? You weren't yeah, I was, the, I was never in the middle part of it, no. Uh, our offices were on the outside, uh, the west end, so I never did go inside. So Bill's um, brother worked there for a while, but uh, he didn't work there too long. But. I don't even know what he did. He yeah. never did talk about it. He just, <laughs> it was a job. Did you, um, did you ever have protesters here at the bar or on your property, and, and how did you feel about that? We did once. Well, they walked up and down the road a lot, but yeah. they never really came on our property yeah. much. We didn't really have too much of an opinion about it. Oh, I it guess. was just, they were just neighbors across the street, and, and uh, we didn't pay that much attention to it. It was no problem, and so we just lived here. Yeah. We lived our life, we let them live theirs. <laughs> so that bar? No, we never approached it. Like you said, they would line up. Uh, on on Sundays street. years ago, they would try to they tried to circle up the plant one time, and that yeah. didn't worked out. Uh, right. But uh, we had a man that would walk out here every Sunday from Boulder and beat mm -hmm. his drum. Beat yeah, his that's drum. right. I forgot yeah. about that. Mm -hmm. But as far as bothering me, no, they never bothered me. Yeah, it was no problem. Were they welcome on? I mean, it, sure. with, with all the Rocky Flats workers here at the lounge, with, did you ever have protesters come in? No. And, no. No tension or anything. No. no. Um, were you, uh, you especially, uh, how did you feel when you found out that the site was going to close? Were you nervous about Well, it affected our business. What happened, it, it affected the business here mainly in 1989 when it closed down the, the regular thing. The last 15 years or so has been the cleanup process. But, uh, you know, you survive, you just have to diversify and do other things. You know. <coughs> we have a fish fry on Friday night, it does very well for me. And, mm -hmm. uh, so, the weekends, I do a lot of poker runs with motorcycles. And, so you just have to do different things Packers to make up to make up yeah packer games and make up for the losses you had from there. We we'll call it a neighborhood ball without a neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> Where do people come from? Just all, all over. Way home from work mainly from Boulder, Golden, Louisville, Cold Creek. So has your clientele changed in the last? The, it's different years? people now, but you know you still you still get the curiosity people coming. Yeah. Bunch of yuppies now? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong place. Yeah. <laughs> Eventually, I'm sure this whole corridor becomes all yuppies. Could be. Yeah. Um, and and so business ha has. Well, you said lunch has dropped off, but the yes, the rest of the business is fine. <coughs> and um, before when the plant was running people would come here on their lunch hour then? Uh, years ago they did, uh, but they cut them back to 30 minutes for lunch at one time, and that, that was kind of hard for them to get in and out, but uh, yeah, we had, uh, 20 years ago we did a good lunch for them. What but kind of food? Burgers? Burgers, burritos, uh, chili, red chili, green chilies, stuff. Um, and do you, do you think that once, I mean, I guess there's, is there anybody from the plant coming in now? There's nobody over there as far as I know. Yeah. No, it's closed completely now, yeah. I think. The last crowd was about three or four, about a month ago, and it was the end of it. And uh, Bill, do you know, you, I, I know this had been, this had been a security Storage shed. On, on the site. Oh, on the was, site. Yeah, out there, yeah. You think it was? Oh, it, was a, it was a construction just, building. Yeah, well, construction building. Construction so building they probably, while they were building Rocky Flats. Probably kept tools and stuff in it, I suppose. Mm-hmm. An office in it, I imagine, and stuff like that. So did your dad get it to have to pay for it? Then he purchased oh, it. Oh, yeah. yeah. He bought it. I got no idea, but it probably wasn't very much well, yeah. <laughs> at the time. No, and his daddy made a good deal. Yeah. Yeah, there was two yeah. buildings. They was both the same size, and the other one was just south. And um, is it, was it the whole, I mean, the, the bathrooms too? Or is no, it no, just, no, just the, this main part of the building. That's right in here. So and it was just, it was like a trailer or something, was it? Or was it well, I'd say kind of like a modular building. It wasn't really. It didn't have wheels or anything on it, and it was too big to be a trailer. So it was just a 
just a big building. Um, do you remember anything about the 57 or 69 fires? No, I don't remember. That was when they burnt something inside the thing. They've had a couple grass fires that I've seen, but... No, the big ones. There's one in 1957 that I don't think that went through the filters. And then 69 was a really big one that, that, was, that everybody... I don't think people knew about the one in 1957 until much later, but the 69 one was in the, in the newspapers and it was a plutonium fire. We might have heard about it, but at the time it didn't uh, no didn't panic us at all no no didn't concern us well, i guess you guys are also you're well, down we, upwind. upwind yeah upwind yeah. and west <coughs> we were in the middle of raising our kids so we probably were so busy with that we <laughs> didn't have time to worry about anything else did um uh, have you had any interactions with other landowners around rocky flats who were um seeking compensation or or uh mm -mm. Middle rights or anything like that? Mm -mm. No, we talk to Charlie McKay every once in a while, but, and he hasn't been here, well, he's been here quite a few years, but I think it's his uncle that owned the property around there for years and uh, sold a lot of that ground to Rocky Flats, it was Mark Church. But uh, we did our thing and they did theirs and wasn't really too concerned about it. Because <laughs> by the time I guess we was old enough to know what was going on, it was in and going, and there it was. So just had to live with it, I guess. Were you aware of um, of Charlie McK of the church, Marcus Church's lawsuit, and, and all those the sort of goings on? With that? Somewhat, yeah. Never did really get involved too much about it, but you'd hear about it, you know. Plant. No, not too much. I guess it's something you have to have if you want to stay alive. But if you want your country safe, you're glad yeah. that they're there. <coughs> and when they close right. it down, then you worry a little bit because then the country's not so safe anymore. <laughs> and at the time when they built it, there was nothing around, which there still isn't anything really close to it. And that, but there was so. no housing developments, no people, no nothing out here when they first built it. So it was a good spot when they first built. So, were you are you glad that it's not there now? That that there's so much building around it, or no, not really. I think it's kind of too bad to put a lot of people out of work and mm -hmm. stuff, and they really didn't ever bothered us or anything. How about you, Wyman? Well, our battles bringing it right up to the what the mountains here. They've got the city limits mm -hmm. to there, and they're going to be building houses right down the road here. We'll soon, so might have a neighborhood. <laughs> have a neighborhood. <laughs> <laughs> You'll have a bar in the neighborhood. <laughs> At least that's the way I understand it. There, <coughs> be a lot of houses at 72 mm -hmm. and 93 down here. On the well, awesome. they'll they'll have to be on the east side because yeah. everything from 93 west is owned by the city of Boulder and yeah. Jefferson and County. Yeah, starting at uh, 72 and uh, they were talking about all the way down 72 mm -hmm. uh, on adjacent, I guess, to the plant site. That's right. Are you planning on developing any of your land? No, not really. Actually, we're talking to the city of Boulder now about a conservation easement. So we don't know if we'll get that done or not. If we get that done, then we'll probably never build on it. Yeah. You'll keep the land and just limit development on it? Right. Yeah, that's the idea. Possibly. Yeah. Well, the family's been there 130 years, and we don't want to lose that. So we're about the only privately owned property left out here anyway, so we'd like to keep it that way. It's a sentimental thing. Yeah, and your kids, do kids support that? Oh, yes. Sort of. A couple of them, anyhow. Oh. Well, <laughs> there's a couple of them that would like to stay in ranching, and the rest of them support our, our decision because they're proud of the fact that the family's been there for 130 years. So. They like to come visit and yeah. ride horses and different things. must be tempting, though, to cash out. Oh, yeah. The oh, yeah. Are so high yeah. Some yeah. of the developers that have come out have offered us 
a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs> Shall we just say that? And we have one son that's in the construction business. Right. Stuff, so, so but he would be the only one that would, we're not interested in subdividing it ourselves. Yeah. But you never know if this thing with the city don't go through, you never know what might happen. What's, uh, what stages are you in with that? Oh, they've made us a few offers and counter offers and a few things, so it's possible that uh, we so might not, deal with them. They're not buying the land outright, but they would buy <coughs> the land rights. Right. Do you like the nature conservancy or one of those Right. Yeah, open space type. But they would just buy the building rights. We'd still own the land. And would you be allowed to put up any additional structures? Possibly. That's part of our negotiations maybe now. Six, it'd be about all. <coughs> right. right. Yeah. And it would still be private, so no, no trails. Correct. Even though they want a trail. They <laughs> want so, a trail. Yes, that's one of the things we're negotiating. How do you feel about that? Mm, not too good, but if they keep it close to the highway, it wouldn't be bad. But we don't want it down through the middle of the place. Would it affect the, the, the lounge? I have no idea. Not really. Just be people hiking. Yeah, they'd people. probably stop and have a cold one. <laughs> <laughs> fish fry. <Yeah. coughs> stop on the way home and have a fish. <laughs> yeah. And why, um, I wonder what your thoughts are about having a nuclear plant. It doesn't bother me. I think it was a necessity at the time they had it there. Uh, and now it's not anymore, so things change. But I'm sure it was, we needed it at the time to put it there. Mm -hmm. <coughs> um, let's see, what else? Well, I wonder if you guys have any recollections of um, any specific events or people or people who came into the bar or rock class that, that might be worth recording for. Not really. That's just nothing stands out. An after work place for them to stop, and, and uh, you never knew anything about what was going on over there. They didn't talk about their jobs. So no. I'd always heard for all the years they made triggers for bombs. That's all I knew. And mm -hmm. when, was there was this the place that people went to after work? It or was there one other of the places. Other they places? Other, I'm sure other places, but it was it was one of the places. So and the name will always remain the same. Uh, <laughs> That's a great name. <laughs> A lot of jokes made about me, but you know, <laughs> like you tell me, blowing in the dark and oh yeah, <laughs> the new bar, and, but everybody knows what it is. Yeah, yeah. If yeah, you, you want to give do. directions, you just say we're yeah. out near the Rocky Flats bar. Everybody knows where the Rocky Flats <laughs> bar is. <laughs> yep. How about you guys? Any any recollections? Of Not really. No, we never had any problems with them, and. They just good neighbors. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, well that went fast. Let me just look and see if I have, um, how about the FBI raid? Anybody remember anything about that? No. Just reading just about reading it and about seeing it, it on TV. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, um, I wonder if I could just Wyman, well, could you take me on a, if I take this off sure. the thing and go on a little tour of the, of the bar? Let me stop this for a second. Okay, we're recording. So this is Wyman Stacy, right? Right. How do you spell that? First name Wyman, W-Y-M-A-N, last name Stacy, S-T-A-C-E-Y. Okay. And this is his bar. <laughs> so this building, let me get the, what's the telephoto? Okay. This building was um, originally, why don't you, you tell, tell me what you know about the building. So cool. well, like Bill was discussing earlier, I think it was a uh, construction building for the nuclear plant when it was being built. And then, I don't know how many years later, but it was turned into a restaurant. And the necessity has been a restaurant bar. And so this is the original room here. Mm -hmm. Bill and Judy. <laughs> And I'm sure I'm not doing justice to it at all. So the fireplace that obviously was added uh, after it was at Rocky Flats. Right, yeah, I'm assuming it's here. 
So it's just a big, big rectangular building, and then in the back. The back is on like it's a pool room. Okay. Need any lights on by there? Is it? Yeah, get the idea. <laughs> you've seen one pool room, you've seen them all. Yeah. And we've got a patio. We added a patio. Okay. Back. Highway 93, and you can see mountains over here. And I guess you could probably see Rocky Flats over. Well, they never could really see Rocky Flats. So the first light down here is to the left is uh -huh. where it was. But back in here, you can see the lights, but you never saw anything other than lights in the highway. Those are the building. That's building. Uh, that's one of the buildings 60, they built whatever. in the past few years for office buildings over there. Right. It's owned by uh, another individual. I don't know. And you were saying this is the, what we, before I turn on the tape, you'd say this is the ra last Rocky... Last Rocky Flats building standing. <laughs> they call it building... 93. <laughs> That's great. Okay. That's the tour. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you guys for participating right. and thank you, Wyman. Right. Appreciate it. Yeah. The was kind of because the Packers was winning it. They're not doing too good this <laughs> no. year. After I've watched them a couple of times, I'm normally the Bronco yet. After I've watched them a couple of times, I understand why it is. Yeah. It's not doing good. <laughs> yeah. But uh, see what's happened. It's always on the big dish. And that's the reason I had the big dish. Uh, about three or four years ago, Direct TV bought the exclusive rights to the same ticket. Uh, the little dish. So yeah. You can sit at home. And, Watch and watch it for oh, yeah. It cost me thirteen hundred for the season. It cost them. Uh, it cost you one hundred fifty for home. Yeah. So yeah. it just cut into it. But we, you know, still got some that wants to go to a bar for them. Right. For yeah. for the games. Right. It's not like it was. But uh, you know.